Storm button, I'm saying. Yes, it's storm. Something, something else. Yes, you press, press uh, those two simultaneously. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. Yes, I think so. Critical in this is this concept of the change. Well, it's more than a power when we involve in the rules of the look at the general law. See, what he's doing is creating an intelligent measure. It's working. Measure. So I failed to do previously. Yeah, no, but, but the rules of whom they will. Sorry to be so obsessive, and I feel after. Yes, I know. Uh, I agree with you. Using that last yeah. tape, uh, yes. it would be uh, a shame to, to, uh, to make, make, another, make another video oh. on it. Yeah, yes. Okay, would you also catch your monocle? Oh, Say there. Well, anyway you like. Is anyway you like. Any way that's convenient for the machine. I don't know whether it matters. I don't think it matters that much, as long as it doesn't catch the monocle. So, I mean, I think you've made the point already on this sheet, gentlemen. We well, I about mean, a big problem here that it needs to be addressed. Let's come out of our in intermediate conversation to, to sum it up. Jeff is asking, when, when you start linking finite state machines in, in a population, okay, yeah. and you're building some kind of system where you think you might achieve the sort of stability that could be represented by eigenvalues or such. Mm -hmm. What is it that makes a difference from elaborating your uh, parallel lines a thousandfold, let's say? And just linking those up in, in a thousand fold parallel or a, or in parallel. The question is, what is what is the distinction that you think is creating this uh, cognitive like process as opposed to this, the, the the parallel serialism? What, how many machines do you need to do that? Or, or uh, I think it, I think it, it, I, I think I, re I refer you here to a discussion called theory of surprises, in which several measures are suggested, and I think affect greatly the cognitive value of events. Uh, certainly, there must be uh, at least a four simplex to represent the necessary pairing up. Uh, and exchange relation between components of a p-individual and another p-individual and their interaction. Okay. So, I mean, it must be at least that. Uh, but um, it may be, of course, very large. And as Atkin rightly points out in his, his theory of surprise, and a lot of other papers, in fact, several uh, extremely valuable contributions to the Richmond conferences which Joe Zeidner and the Army Research Institute ran on complex decision making, uh, as well as his books. So these papers are actually more elaborate, illuminating insofar as he realizes, or is realizing very clearly, uh, that a couple of things. Um, a, is realizing, this is Ron Atkin, is, is realizing, uh, it sounds condescending to say, I'm sorry that flow of traffic, which is what he calls process, and for good reason, because a lot of his initial work was in urban dynamics and urban planning, is complement Terry to relational structure. In other words, you can't have one without the other. Right. In fact, his theory seems to import traffic on a, a relational structure. He's now realizing, I mean, say that he's realizing this is, is absolutely uh, pompously stupid now, has realized and uh, is now fully in accord with the idea that indeed he can't really define one without the other. B, that Q analysis, which is, I'll call this Q analysis and give it a tag name. It, it includes the theory of flow and the theory of surprises as well. You know. uh, the Q analysis must have n greater than two relations, adic relations. And this is. Uh, n greater than two relations. N greater than two adic relations. Well, you see. Because this relation here, for example, um, 
can be represented in the external algebra if you take enough different relations in uh, uh, a, bi and a binary matrix or a matrix representation of the binary. I just missed the words. You said n greater than two relations. Yeah. And you uh, something the, the else. n greater than two eddic relations, not n greater than two. I mean, he has many relations at the moment. But if you have, uh, even if you have a, a, a matrix to represent both, and it may be a graded matrix with numbers in it or a binary matrix, it's a relation which is two eddic. And you have decomposed all relations into binary, to adic relations. Uh, there are, however, ternary relations. How do you represent those? Well, generally, you can represent any relation in the field of infinite matrices. That's what the field of infinite matrices is about, infinite operators and their converse. Um, but I mean, Richard Cook developed this field, incidentally, and he, he was my second mathematics teacher. Dr. Hudson was the first, and I used to have a rehearsal room in his flat. He was a very charming guy. Uh, I never studied officially under him. He was reader of mathematics at Birkbeck and developed, uh, has written the only books on the infinite matrices that I know of, and uh, that have ever been written, I think, in, in full detail. And uh, it turned out uh, he was willing to, to help me with these things, uh, these curious sorts of tensor like operators and twist tensor operators and things, and uh, I learned a great deal from him, as well as having the pleasure of using his studio as a rehearsal room for shows. <laughs> that was in the days when Lina Minici asked me to write, uh, write my first musical show consisting in an opera uh, of her life, Countess Alina Minici, and had court, held court in, in Pimlico with the Lord Chancellor, a stage conjurer, and uh, well, a lot of stories about that. But it, actually, you can, in in the field of infinite matrices, represent n-adic relations. But it is uh, these are not just matrices with a lot of entries in them. They they are many dimensional matrices, and they are in fact infinite dimensional matrices. And um, it's um, the infinity does not apply to the number of cells in the thing. It, 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 it applies, it may, it may apply to that. Um, that's simple enough. It applies to the form of the operator. Uh, for example, between you and I is, or, or agree in its simplest form, A agrees with B about, is necessarily a ternary relation, for example. And maybe a very large identity relation. Now, Ron is now saying, I must deal with those as well, which is good. And it is possible to deal with them, obviously, and in, in, in the manner suggested, for example, and no doubt in more elegant manners, too. Um, at any rate, I think we've gone through that bit to answer essentially the first few inquiries on the. Are you satisfied or not? Well, I think we need not. to ask some more questions. Oh, good, excellent. Even if we come back next week to continue... No, with that's fine. That's great. I, I think the, the difficulty is is to ask uh, what it is about the interconnection, for example, of the machines in your pop population, which is different from the interconnections of the machines in the parallel. Is it that instead of having interrupts where one machine stops and throws information to the other, you're requiring that the machines... Simultaneously, yes, they resonate. They resonate. Excuse me. They resonate. The truth value is modeled by resonance. That is, is uh, well, well, resonance, mm -hmm. or entrainment actually, mm -hmm. uh, entrainment or resonance. So, so the the point is that you're requiring rather than this sort of architecture where the only way the machines communicate yeah. is for one to stop, throw a piece of information at the other, yeah. and then to start up That's again. Right. Yeah. That, in fact, it is the simultaneous values mm. of yeah. states in yeah. the machines that sure. impinge. It is. I mean, can you it, simulate it, that simultaneity? Uh, you, you can simulate it, sure. Yes. What's, 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 but what's different about the simulation because of it, simultaneity? And act, what have you gotten by actual simultaneity that you haven't gotten by the What simulation? is different about the map made by the German professor who was obsessive and Lewis Carroll, I think, recounts, Dodson recounts this. This very sober German professor who made a map so wonderful of the country 
uh, that it looked like country no, or they, exact they made maps on larger it was still larger, a map. <laughs> Sorry. They, they eventually made maps on larger and larger yeah. scale until they made a map of the country that was one to one. And it, uh, they discovered the difficulty of unrolling the map, and they decided to use the country itself mm. rather than bothering with the map. <laughs> yeah. There is and, another, and, another moral. It was still a map too. It wasn't a country. <laughs> No, I, no, I admit that there is a, there is a, a distinction. Yeah. Now, the, I thought, and I also agree that a system that in fact operates upon simultaneity of more than two things yeah. is different than a system which does not. The point at which I differ with Gordon, and I agree with him, that such a thing is different. Okay? We will all agree that it's different. different. Now, the question is, in fact, whether such a thing actually exists. That is to say, yeah. is there, in my question to Gordon, I don't think it's an answerable question, is whether or not the thing which is in my head is, in fact, a thing which is uh, having I, simultaneous relations. I, I postulate, okay. yes, that yes, there are co -currencies And I might postulate a, 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 a counter hypothesis is that what's inside my head is something that is simulating that. I think that well, you could do that. Yeah. Is, and and um, I, what my assertion is that the reason why I might want to assert that, mm -hmm. uh, I, first of all, that my assertion of that does not make it any less reasonable to study uh, systems with ternary and higher order mm -hmm. interactions. Yeah. Okay, but it, the, my reason I might want to assert that is I would note that in the so far partially successful formulations of physics, yeah. not necessarily guaranteed to be correct, but that is to say the so far functioning of physics yeah. runs off of binary relations. Yes, I'm oh. not suggesting nothing does. I'm, merely, I'm not suggesting nothing does. No, no. So, so I'm merely suggesting that some things don't. Yeah. And in particular, the observation of physical phenomena is more than two added. Yes, I know, but the question is whether or not if the, that more than two added relation uh, is irreducible. Uh, is is well. For example, if I if I look at a neuron upon which a lot of things impinge, the, whether that neuron fires or not certainly depends upon the sort of, in some sense, simultaneous state of all the things which impinge upon it. Yeah. But in fact, that simultaneous is a blurred notion. That is to say, if you do an ex you may be able to do experiments yeah. that. Uh, uh, Three things will be considered simultaneous by the neuron if their states are determined within a certain interval of time. In that yeah. case, I have a system that behaves as if it's a multiadic thing. That is to say, the, the what happens next is determined by not binary relations but higher order relations. But it's in fact being run by something. Uh, that is in fact uh, running off of binary relations. It does this binary check and then it sees whether several binary relations are satisfied within some interval of time. Uh, That's the difference between something that is genuinely running off of a multi yeah. relation and something that is uh, simulating that behavior. Yeah. And and I would suggest that I would suggest that a, a broader uh, again I my feeling would be that if in fact there are genuine things which are not merely simulating this paradigm, but are that paradigm, that I would hope that the same thing would eventually propagate back into physics, for example. In other words, yeah, I would right. find it, I would be comfortable with the notion that in fact uh, this is a multi machine rather than this is doing a very good job of simulating a multi machine, but it's yeah. not. If that would propagate it back, and, it, and I'm perfectly yeah, willing I to think, I think it should be. And uh, I, you know, my, my assertion is that that either multiple polarity things are fundamental uh, in physics yeah, and yeah. here, yeah. Sure. or not. Sure, that's clear. I and, think, yeah. uh, in other words, I'm reductionist in that sense. I'm not saying that's everything needs right. yeah. to be reducible to binary relations because I don't well, know that that's fundamental. Yeah. Okay, no, no, but I, I am reductionist in the sense that if multiadic relations are not only necessary for a powerful description of the behavior of this population of machines, but in fact are fundamental yeah. in the sense that that's really what it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, that, that that should go backwards. In other words, I don't want it to be that in physics binary relations are work, uh, work, and that at some level of complexity of the system. Oh Lord, no! For heaven's sake, no! No, no I entirely I agree. I mean, the point is that I, I think that when one plows it back, uh, you probably find that. Um, there are many areas of physics where 
which would be better described, better better accounted for, well, could yeah. actually be done, are actually done in oh, yes. a multi adic fashion. Yes, I also agree with that. And, and, uh, the success of physics is merely also a simulation. Nevertheless, I'm the last the person, I was the last person to exclude the perfectly good consideration of binary event relations. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, I don't. Say, I don't think those are excluded. I just don't think they have anything to do with information transfer. Yeah, let, let me just say one more little step. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, but I want to say this: is is that that uh, uh, we have here a situation where, in conversation theory, for example, the making the basic element that is considering a more than binary relationship is. A necessity for making the theory function. Yes. The necessity. Now one can take the point of view that that implies something about the, the nature of relations in the world generally, rather than the nature of relations in this theory. Yes. And, no. and expect that these things will propagate out into other sciences. Or one could take the point of view that this is necessary because it's immensely convenient and powerful nota notation. Yeah. I have um, a paper, actually, which you've probably read, um, which was written at NIAS uh, in this context. And what I did was, first of all, to take a Petri representation using Petri's information notion, which is quite different to Shannon's or selective information or uh, even so called semantic information by Hillel and so on, kind of thing. And uh, Petri represent uh, the proto -language, so primitive proto linguistic expressions. Um, it turned out that among the Petri representations, one got as a reduced form gauge theory. And uh, gauge theory is, a, is a, a neat form of dealing with otherwise unhandleable groups in physics. Um, providing you admitted that the adjoined statistics attached. Uh, to multi-particle or multi-component particle, multi-quark configuration, whatever you call them, uh, was a Petri-type representation, then only some of this came out. In fact, the signaling particles, which do convey information, came out as irreducibly, uh, I think, free or four adic. So. So this that is, is uh, what, what, I mean, it comes out as the epistemology of L sub P. You can take any subject like physics with, at a given moment, a well-specified epistemology, and a subset of it will become that, and it does. I think I can see that, 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 that would be the case. Yeah. Uh, that it would probably, is probably true for non-trivial yeah. gauge theories, yeah. that yeah. You're, this sure. is necessary when you, exactly. or this is a convenient way yeah. of expressing yeah. it. Whereas for abelian gauge theories, it's yeah. probably not necessary. Uh, exactly, yes. Precisely. Precisely. Ab absolutely. Absolutely. That is, that is at least is my finding. I'd like to check. And it seems to me, and it might even apply to your cosmological ideas, which I still wait to discuss and yes. hope we shall discuss this evening. Because I feel there may be some very strong connection here. Now, I am first to agree with you. I just wasn't making that much claim in order to be sort of modest about CT and, and L sub P. But I do believe uh, it's right to say that quite a lot of uh, exchange relations in physics, which are essentially signaling relations, turn, to con turn out to contain information in the real sense, rather than being signals. Do you have any names for the sorts of relations that might be involved in that kind of uh, population, such as between is a relation? Uh, uh, names in language, well, names that have a common... Between you know, happy, uh, sad, uh, joyful, expressive, uh, triangular, uh, is not usually uh, more than that, no, it doesn't necessarily. Um, um, city, urbanism, um, I, I, I don't mind, you know, I've got masses. Uh, there are simply masses of them, and it's, it's difficult to say because why? Uh, because uh, it is, it, because it is uh, 
you know, everyone's asking about everything, yeah. in a sense. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to get through now in this session, so we have another session, I hope, next week. Yes, we will. I, I want to get through to a point. Okay, well, that's why I'd just like to get through this page in this session and look at this thing in this session, then to go on to LP in the next sure. session. Is that all right? That Can that be scheduled before? You, uh, people. When you return next week. Yeah, whatever, whatever good. Is right. Uh, well, I'll start... We might schedule it so it's on your agenda before you go. Uh, I'm going to start out as I did last time with, with this construction, and I, I'm going to give the construction and possibly the annotations added, and I'm going to put on this uh, refer to to purple sheet. Next. In fact, to this one, I believe, it's the next sheet, isn't it? Yes, it is. The purple sheet's the next one. Um, now, I take it as a start out with a thing I call a procedure. Now, it could start at any place. This is a formal conversation theory. But, ladies and gentlemen, it is absolutely necessary to get it under your belt. I mean, either you have this or else you're not creating anything at all. And it isn't really there, it's there as a kind of nice piece of chat or something. And I'm afraid it's, uh, it's not all that easy to get it, because it certainly is a way of a while to get it. Maybe it comes to you, obviously. I think well, uh, an index or a name, which is used as an index, and it's going to be a name for a thing I would call a, a P individual or a organizationally closed informationally open system, which is either more, I call it a P individual, which may be a person, or there may be several in one person. Now you should use Z as an index of the labels A, B, or Z. Uh, I will use uppercase letters T for topic name. That is to say, for names of concepts, which are, in this case, personal concepts, rather than... Uh, I will also use those in a different way in LP, which is why I want to avoid difficulty over the notation. In order to simplify the notation, avoid a great deal of indexing, it is easier to have a slight ambiguity at this stage. So these are parts of personal concepts. And PROC Z, the procedure belonging to Z of the ith kind, I equals whatever you like, uh, producing as a yet undefined T, is defined as equivalent to an ordered pair, uh, consisting in a, a program or algorithm, if you prefer it, uh, ZI of T, and comma, an interpretation which either is subscripted with the value of Z or the value of a universe of discourse in a B individual. So X, Y uh, can either be universes, either value of Z, naming a P individual, or universes in a P individual, i.e. distinct things which may be attended to and would be independent unless put together by analogy relations. Uh, I would like just to make a note here that the observation of an agreement uh, is of course a metaphor in the l starred language where these prog bits are exchanged and it is a metaphor uh, designating an analogy in fact, namely the exchange. So it does not have a standard truth value. Metaphors don't. They have the value of a coherence, an analogy, which is so created. Start for an analogy in fact in the program? Well, you exchange 
programs in that, sure, because or, or algorithms or whatever. Because I mean, if we look at the diagram on this page, we are looking at just that very process where we're exchanging these things, and the content of the agreement is that which is exchanged, and they are written in a language which I haven't yet defined. I have defined it in that picture, but I haven't yet defined it here. And it's L, a conversational language. And they may be written in a conversational language, if you like, when they're interpreted or compiled in some medium. I remember we had, in the, when I say the purple page, we had an area about medium, uh, and uh, L generated from L sub P by hypothesis, anyhow. And we will give these sorts of letter to, uh, in the case of personal concepts, concept, and in the case of, uh, of entailment meshes or LP expression, something slightly different. There is uh, an application called X or execution of an operator, and this application is considered to be uh, uh, an indefinite iteration. And in each Z, there are several applications. Okay. Now, from this we also get the principle of complementarity, which is that in an extended sense, this thing is an eigenoperator, and these are the eigenvalues. But you have to take that notion, uh, which is a perfectly good notion, as a special case notion, which would apply if there's an indefinitely iterated program for computing sine or cosine or something. Uh, or some very complex thing, it doesn't matter, it needn't be a numerical, it could be symbolic of any sort, and extend it to the case where you're not pegged on to the rails or, or, or the integer, but may have any of these counting schemes. So execution, this is why I'll pull over on the other page, all the chat about simplices and stuff, that execution, although indeed you can simulate execution schemes, the actual execution relations are usually an addic, n greater than two addic. Uh, the application of these things is usually such. Now I'm going to go on to define another thing, and this is called the concept, and it's defined in terms of prop. Uh, it's defined as equal to, this is using BNF notation, if you like, uh, proc Con Z T, okay, that's Z's concept of T, is defined as equal to proc Z I T, particular, uh, ordered set, deeply coherent collection okay, of proc Z I T. Z1, T, 2T, two, two or so, or to an unordered set consisting of an ordered set of ZIT and, and another unordered set of proc ZJ, J not equal to IT. What is the. Becoming coherent with. What is the distinction between. Oh, the ordered and unordered here means things not yet rendered coherent, things yeah, rendered that coherent. Yeah, that is all. That is mean that is coherent, ordered, parallel, coherent. And as fully. This is partly coherent part. And what does it mean for the two procedures to be coherent? It means that they may be executed without conflict. Does it say some any or all of the, any or all of them may be executed without conflict? Simultaneously. Concurrently, simultaneously. Concurrently, yeah. Something like yeah. that. Not merely that they produce the same result, but no, that, that, no, that's already no, taken no, as given. No, they, they must but either be fact, modified as programs, if in this case, or if they may modify by compiling or interpreting them in different bits of gadget. Let us say something that, was, that, that could not be, yeah. would be, for example, uh, 
if you had two programs procedures for doing something, but the effort to run them concurrently caused the, uh, the individual to separate himself into two physical lumps from one of them moving to Argentina, that yeah. would not be a, a use. Those would not have those would not have become coherent. Correct. Procedures. Absolutely correct. Now, the uh, inclusion exclusion principle. Sorry, I'll just use black pen. The inclusion exclusion principle. So inclusion. Exclusion. Well, inclusion is simply X con Z T goes into T Z, the complementarity principle up here. Uh, but you can't have one without the other. Uh, and the exclusions. The only exclusion is uh, any proc in con or any con in particular con z t x con z t goes into r z something different. Another index. In other words, the same procedures cannot produce different eigenvalues. But many procedures, of course, may produce the same. Mm -hmm. We now postulate a closed system, which I shall show you exemplars written down here, to represent a minimal form of concept, a minimal writable form. Uh, it is, of course, that there are things of type con, which operate upon con, or parts of con, the proc in con, to produce other procs in con. Now, in psychological parlance, it's often useful to talk about these description building operations, whereby other descriptions are produced without necessarily having any procedure to achieve them. And this is a procedure building operation, a rule making operation, if you like, uh, which is called PB. Uh, and I've never useful psychological distinctions, but actually they only differ in terms of phase, as will be demonstrated. And con plus is of type con, con minus is of type con. They act, in this case, upon the thing complementary to the result of the procedure, or the eigenvalues of the procedure, to produce a different entity. Okay? They operate upon PZ, QZ. That's the execution of con ZP and con ZQ to produce TZ, mm -hmm. which is not in that set already. It doesn't exist already. Then we have con minus Z, which is con ZP, con ZQ. Other part of the argument is TZ to produce proc ZT in the connective con ZT. The connective in does not mean epsilon in set theory, it does not mean inclusion, it means coherent with. In other words, what's happening is this thing is being built up from that thing. We just started with that. Okay? Mm -hmm. Right here? Now, the requirement for organizational closure is that in some conceptual schemes, not necessarily the same one. Amongst the products lie also, this is not the only product, amongst other things that is produced, con z plus and con z minus are produced. Now, as a matter of fact, this requirement is not so outrageous as it sounds, since clearly we can rewrite this by putting in uh, con z minus under phase of application, uh, find is equal to con z plus of x, sorry, I hold it, con z plus and con z minus, apologies, I've changed the notation around, I got it wrong, 
this thing can be rewritten in terms of this thing by putting the x's inside the brackets. Mm -hmm. So x con well, should be x's up here too. These should all be x in front of them. Um, putting this inside the brackets, x con z minus is equal to con z plus is equal to x con z plus actually con z minus con z minus x con z p x con Z, Z, Q, dot, 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 dot. So what you've really done is simply introduce an order relation. And there isn't a heap of the difference in these two. Okay. And if you execute those inside the bracket, if you apply those inside the bracket, you'll obtain those results up there. Because x con z p is p z, x con z q is q z. So what you require is that this con, special con if you like, is produced by at least some concept in a bundle. And if we have a bundle like this, which also is able to produce other things, mm -hmm. then we will call it a, a schema in z. And in order to avoid further subscripting, I've used an asterisk and a number superscript. Uh, and that is a coherent cluster of such things sticking together, having lots of concepts in it, maybe, also arranged in all kinds of curious ways, which are better explicated in terms of L sub P statements or entailment measures. But uh, if we have a pair of them which are also open and do something else, and if their openness attaches to each other, then a p individual named z is defined as minimally that pair such that we have a conservation principle, which is information transfer or synchronization or, if you like, dependency making, partial dependency making, partial synchronization, which is, is in one one correspondence really as process goes with that internal process there. And we have a thing called a p individual which can be identified and this, of course, requires a medium called a language L. And that actually, that such that, constructs L. So you ask what is language, that's what I think language is. And the uh, construction schemes of these horrendous diagrams here, where I, I show, maybe you'd like to take a copy of these pages, just to remind you, in this notation, Oh, darn, it's come well, to bits. Zero, I'm sorry, this has come to bits, Paul Oche. I do apologize. Um, I will make it go together in a moment. I want the production schemes throughout. And I rather imagine that all of the gentlemen would like them. And I'll put the staples back in this one. But it's when well, it wasn't stapled. It, well, it's, something fell out. I don't know. No, I think it's just it's the staple. I think it was a staple, the, actually, or something. Process. Whatever, whatever it was, however you want to put it together, you could to take those, and then we can hand them around. And I don't intend to draw those out, please, on the um, on the uh, paper, because although I agree it would be easier to do that, it's uh, extremely difficult to draw. And what I've shown there are the minimal relations of uh, conversation theory. What I've shown is this sharing of concepts which we looked at in the earlier picture of the minimal hard datum of social or psychological relevance, I think in general of relevance, as a matter of fact. Uh, what I've shown in that is uh, an agreement that occurs and um, between concepts in such pairs of things as this, capable of internal conversations of their own, internal to the peer individual, and that the, uh, I show first an initial condition of uh, concept of 
T and A being constructed, the concept of T and B being constructed, the event I am talking about, and also, finally, the uh, result of that event in at least one case, or one result of the event, where we have a shared uh, and enlarged concept in both A and B. Now, this expresses in terms of this formalism, which contains, notice, an exclusion principle, a complementarity principle, a conservation principle of information transfer, and um, several parity principles. And, in fact, conserve quantities information transfer. It is, there is an ordinance, information transfer is conserved. You'll notice also that a minimal P individual has the form of A conversation between S asterisk Z and S number top Z. Um, so, if we... Can I ask you perhaps, Paul, to... Oh, no, I'd better replace them. These are the originals, are they? Are these the originals? Oh, no, you have the originals. Yeah, oh, sorry. I yeah. I was just asking, if we, if we look first at the, the first page, you will find a content of, of a concept of A as expressed for a, a concept of T as expressed for participant A. It might equally well be regarded as um, A's concept of P or Q, depending upon which end you pick it up from. Um, I've called it concept T of A because I will put the concept in the next figure on the same page, I have plotted the concept T of B in that notation, which is obtained from con RB, con SB, and I can equally well have called it concept of R on the part of B or concept of S on the part of B. Now, that is the initial state, we might presuppose, a very minimal kind of state, supposing that A and B are P individuals having this property that incidentally is a parity principle there. Now, we get into the next picture, which is the agreement, not on what you've got as the next page, but on page 376, 1777, sorry, I'm print. This is where I need lights and, and, and my monocle. And that is the interaction event between A and B. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go back in the notation a little bit in a moment. Um, the result in A or B, and it should be subscripted to Z, it is, so it's Z equals A or B, it is actually, is this thing, which is there on page 7378. 378. Okay? Now, ladies and gentlemen, that is my belief in the matter, is a minimal component of an event. I make, want to make a few comments about these diagrams. They're production schemes, but they are not um, in the usual sense, they're similar, but rather easily. They can be modelled without uh, having the restriction of simulation on them by, uh, I show in fact in this paper, a model using nonlinear oscillators, which of course is highly restricted, uh, but the entrainment of which is not, uh, you know, it's very specialised, I mean, it's a completely special case, of course. But nevertheless, a model which isn't a simulation, you can easily do a model which is a simulation in many different ways. Um, the productions drawn as double arrows are productions in the ordinary sense, excepting I am not dogmatizing about the adicity of the event relation. Uh, you might like to mark on your copies that con Z plus is marked there as DB. Okay? as an operator db, and con z minus, I think, is marked there as an operator pb. I can't quite, I'm not sure how I did, whether I did or not. I think I did. It's just easier to write, but um, it's um, easier to write. Uh, however, the minimal representable system, as far as I can see, is that one. Uh, the single arrows have a meaning. They're the synchronization arrows. When people talk about unordered sets of production rules, particularly in linguistics and computer science and so on, you find they're tending to say, well, they have to be executed in some manner. How do we choose the manner of execution? 
And actually, one difficulty is that there is no floating pool of, of analog type, if you want, which will contain the products. Now, these diagrams do not presuppose that. Although the production rules of any, whatever eventodicity, are unordered in their application, their ordering is determined by the presence of the arguments upon which they act. So it is very much, I often use the analogy, it's very much more like, and it's a good analogy, I believe, more like the pictures drawn by biochemists, where enzymes are things that act upon uh, a material, a substrate, to produce a product. And the products get back to the enzyme, and furthermore, some of the products of the whole system are things like con Z plus con Z minus, or whatever, which actually operates upon enzymes to reproduce them. Now, I mean that literally. In other words, I don't know in what...